all right so this class this lecture we look at the common source amplifier with a resistive load and apply the small signal analysis that we studied last time uh, so these are the parameters uh, we've seen all of these before now i have added a lambda as 0 0.05 for uh, n and p actually this class we don't need the p only the n so vt is 0.4 mu on c ox 200 micro w by l 20 uh, and so mu on c ox w by l is 4 and so on the same numbers we have used for the last many classes all right uh, this is a small signal circuit we derived last time so this is just a reminder uh, of the circuit that we'll now use uh, in this uh, lecture okay so this was a circuit we are looking at uh, now i put a value for the resistance uh, 2 kilo ohms so let us go through the steps of solving these circuits when there is an AC signal present. So the steps are, step 1, we solve the circuit under DC conditions without the AC source. So we remove the AC source or short circuit it, solve the circuit. Step 2 is we remove all the DC sources, the 3 volt as well as the 0.9 volt, keep only the AC source, solve the circuit again that will be the small signal solution and therefore for that step we will replace the transistor with its small signal equivalent circuit we will solve it and step 3 will be to put both these solutions together superposition all right so these are basically steps of superposition dc first then ac then add the two answers together now remember that the step 2 must follow step 1 because in step 2 we will use the small signal circuit which has gm and ro and gm and ro are actually functions of the dc currents and voltages all right so we have to solve the dc circuit first to find the dc currents and voltages and then use those in uh, step 2 to solve the small signal circuit all right, so let's do that for this circuit. So step one is solve the DC circuit. Now we've already solved this specific circuit in back in lecture five. So I'm just writing the answers here. It's a very straightforward circuit. So the drain DC drain current is 0.5 milliampere. The DC drain voltage is two volts uh, as we had seen before. Then now we solve the AC circuit. So we make all the DC sources zero and replace the transistor with its small signal equivalent circuit so this is the circuit we get all right now let's just uh, again this is tri trivial but let's just go through it so short this short the resistor rd that where it is connected to three volts to ground and then so and then the mosfet will be replaced by uh, this one a current source gm vgs in parallel with ro the source is grounded the source of the mosfet is grounded at the gate is connected v in and at the drain is connected rd all right so this is what we get so this is a small signal mosfet then at the drain is rd and the other end of rd is ground and at the gate is the small signal input source again uh, You've seen this before, but I am repeating it because learning to draw small signal circuits is one of the most important things you have to do when you do analog circuits. I have seen PhD students who cannot, could not draw small signal circuits correctly. So this is this looks simple, but of course it gets more complex as the circuits become bigger and you must learn to draw these all right so once it is drawn this is of course an extremely simple circuit ro is in parallel with rd so you just can bring this around and because this node is grounded so we get this current gmvgs flowing through the parallel combination of ro and rd and so the voltage vo at the drain is gmv in in parallel multiplied by rd parallel ro so of course vo is minus gm rd parallel ro into v in and so this quantity is the voltage gain of this amplifier now let's put values 
So Gm is mu n C ox W by L into Vgs minus Vt. Mu n C ox W by L is 4, Vgs is 0.9, Vt is 0.4. So all of this put together becomes Gm is 2 milliamps per volt. RO is 1 by lambda ID, which is 1 by 0 0.05, which is lambda and ID is 0.5. ID is in milliamps, so RO comes out in kilo ohms, 40 kilo ohms. RD is 2 kilo ohms. So we'll say, well, RD parallel RO is approximately RD, 2 in parallel of 40 is approximately 2. It's okay, we really don't care if it is 2 or 1.991 or something. Alright, so we say VO is minus GM RD, V in equal to GM is 2, RD is 2, so this is minus 4 V in. All right, so our first amplifier circuit of this semester has a voltage gain of magnitude of 4. All right. All right. Now, let us ask a question. So this is our expression for the voltage gain. VO is the voltage gain times V in. Do we keep the transistor in saturation or triode? if we want to use it as an amplifier we've not asked this question before and it's an important question you know the answer the answer is saturation but let us justify it mathematically looking at this expression is this expression larger in triode or is it in larger in saturation so to answer this we must ask ourselves is gm larger in saturation or in triode and is ro larger or saturation in saturation or in triode rd is given to us so it is gm and ro that we want to look at so let us look at the expressions for gm and ro or i'm saying you look at them okay so you pause and you answer this question i think it is good because it will make you think and do some mathematics. All right. So let us look at GM in triode and its saturation. So we write the drain current equation in triode. And then we do di del ID del VG to find the GM in triode. So we do del ID del VG. This parenthesis term goes away and we will get mu and Cox W by L into VDS. In saturation, we already saw, so it is mu and C of W by Vgs minus Vt. Which one is greater? Is this larger or is this larger? Hmm. The question can be answered if we assume that a gate voltage is present, right? So we're going to apply some gate voltage and then we can bias the transistor in triode or saturation by varying rd so given a vgs our question is is this larger or is this larger and the answer is this is always larger than this because why because in triode vds is always less than or equal to vgs minus vt given a vgs so given a vgs vds in triode is always less than vgs minus vt therefore gm is always larger in saturation compared to triode given a gate source voltage okay let's look at ro ro you can do ex expressions i am doing graphical because graphical is much nicer to look uh, what is ro ro is a reciprocal of the slope of the id vd characteristic like right? this is the idvd characteristic ro was 1 over ro was del id del vds which is the slope so if we want ro to be large so that our gain is large then the slope of this characteristic must be the smallest now the slope of course of this characteristic is the smallest in saturation the slope is higher in the triode region and if the slope is higher ro is lower in triode all right so both gm and ro are larger in saturation and therefore mosfets are always operated in saturation when they are used as amplifiers all right so somebody asks you now 
why you know the answer why they are placed in saturation all right okay so we get uh, so now we finish this by doing step 3 which is uh, the output voltage is the sum of the dc and the ac the dc was 2 volts the ac was minus 4 v in where v in is uh, whatever we make it to be all right now let us think for a moment about what happens as we increase the amplitude of the input uh, AC signal. All right, so this Vm cos omega t, what happens as Vm is increased? All right, so what happens as Vm is increased, the, the amplitude of this AC signal increases. So we have a 2 volt and on, so on top of the 2 volt we'll ride an AC so it will go up and down and up and down and as the amplitude Vm increases this up and down uh, will either cause Vo to reach 3 volts on the higher side and on the lower side it will make this Vo go to Vgs minus Vt which is the point at which the transistor will go out of saturation all right so we uh okay vgs minus vt is i'm sorry 0.5 volts right 0.9 minus 0.4 so 0.5 volts all right so either the as vm is increased it is possible that the transistor will either go to go into triode on the lower end or if the voltage reaches 3 volts that means the current becomes 0 and then the transistor has turned off all right now as we just saw we want to make sure that the transistor stays in saturation for it to be a good amplifier or for it to give a good amplification therefore for all amplifiers a quantity is defined called the output voltage swing which is the range of output voltages for which the transistor stays on and in saturation all right so this quantity is very important we'll keep coming back to it and it is defined as the difference of the maximum output voltage that can exist minus the minimum output voltage that can exist while keeping the transistor in saturation and on all right so the highest voltage that this can go to is of course 3 volts the lowest it can go to is 0.5 because below vo equal to 0.5 the transistor goes into triode so the output voltage swing for this circuit is 3 minus 0 0.5 which is 2.5 volts all right output voltage swing very important quantity now I wanted to mention one more thing. I said that uh, as the output volt, as the the signal swings, the output voltage will swing and it will go up and down, and it can go up to three volts. Now, when the output is going up, what is the input doing? Because of this negative sign, as you know, the input is actually decreasing all right the input ac signal as the input ac signal decreases the current in the transistor decreases because the total gate voltage has become smaller if the current decreases the drain voltage increases because the current decreases means there is a smaller voltage drop across rd and vo increases all right now so what might happen is that if V in becomes equal to how much? 0.5 volts. All right. If the V in magnitude is 0.5 volts, then when V in is equal to minus 0.5 volts, because it's a sinusoidal, it's going to go plus 0.5 to minus 0.5. So when the V in is minus 0.5 volts, so 0.9 minus 0.5 is 0.4. So the total gate voltage is 0.4 which is the threshold voltage and so the current becomes 0 and when the current becomes 0 the output reaches 3 volts. Alright so this is how the output can reach 3 volts. 
all right so i have done a couple of plots here all right so this is so this is an the output voltage up, uh, of this uh, circuit with a dc of 2 volts and then there is an ac applied of 5 cos omega t millivolts so 5 and the gain what was the gain the gain was 4 so 5 milli into 4 is 20 millivolts so this is oscillating uh, around 2 volts with an amplitude of 20 millivolts all right but actually as you can see so this is 2 and uh, plus 20 milli will be 2.02 so that 2.02 is here but actually the voltage is not going to uh, 2.02 volts why is this uh, you think about it so this i did a simulation and the simulation showed that the actual voltage is not going to 2.02 you think about it and you ask me in the discussion session on friday why it is not going and incidentally i have plot you can see some little bit red here and there i have also plotted the input voltage appropriately shifted and all that so that uh, i want to compare what the output looks like if i were to uh, you know amplify the input so this is input minus the dc 0.9 multiplied by 4 which is the gain and then i have added the dc shift of 2 volts so that it comes uh, you know it overlaps with the output so they are exactly overlapping so the output is exactly uh huh interesting okay uh it is exactly overlapping actually i don't know why it is overlapping it should not but anyway i'll leave that at some minor point but basic more or less they are exactly overlapping now suppose we increase the amplitude of this input ac signal here is what happens so if the in, uh, input amplitude is 500 millivolts all right or 0 0.5 volts right then the input appropriately amplified is the red and we would expect if the circuit was linear then the output would be around 2 volts it will go to 0 and it will go to 4 volts because a gain of 4 so 0.5 into 4 is 2 volts so you get 2 volts and then it should go to 4 and 0 but of course our MOSFET cannot go down to 0 because much before it goes down to 0 the transistor goes into triode so this blue line is showing that the transistor is going into triode and when it goes into triode the voltage gain becomes smaller and so this is flattening out the output voltage is no longer a faithful reproduction of the input shape this is the input shape the output is flattened because the gain is smaller similarly at the top the output is flattened the output is flattened at 3 volts the highest it can go to is 3 volts so in this in fact here the transistor has turned off because the output is stable at 3 volts and again here the voltage gain has become smaller all right because why because the gate voltage was very close to threshold and the transistor became uh, went into triode even on this side of the cycle all right so this is distortion of course all right so we'll let's look at the uh, next thing so we've got a gain of minus four of course this is not a very large gain and uh, so the next question we ask is well okay we've started our study of amplifiers and our first amplifier has given us a gain of 4 now let us think about how we will increase this gain so what can we do to this circuit or what can we do to the element values or the voltages in the circuit so as to increase this gain let us also think about what is a maximum gain we can get from this circuit all right so I'm, i want to leave you with these two questions and end this lecture here and we'll pick it up next time uh, so that you get some time to sit and think and then as soon as you are ready you can start watching the next lecture okay